All right, we're live now. Hey everyone, we're here live with Katiana Kare. Uh, she is the CEO of Bijou Bijou and a financial strategist. And today we're gonna be talking about um, the importance of side hustles and how to make your side hustles legit and crisis funding and a few other financial tips you should know. We have the beautiful Katiana here with us. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. My name is Katiana Carré. Yes, I'm a powerful Haitian woman. <laughs> um, I help empower women financially, specifically women that look like you and I. Um, I'm also the co-founder of Bijou Bijou LLC, and Bijou Bijou is a platform that helps empower women on a global scale. So we find women entrepreneurs, we connect them to their to their buyers and, the, and people looking for their products and services, and uh, uh, we help empower them through education and helping them increase their sales. All right. And uh, today we're going to focus more on your personal finance, your, your small business finance, and uh, how to make both of them work together and, uh, and empower you as a whole. I hope that was that yeah, answers that was why perfect. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. To be completely honest, you are the best person to go to when it comes to financial advice because you whip everybody right into shape, you know, <laughs> right into yes, shape. I do. Um, so, of course, we all know that we're currently all experiencing the uh, the effects of the outbreak and the pandemic, and it has been putting a lot of businesses and people's lives on hold. And of course, it's stopping because a lot of people aren't able to congregate in large in uh, you know in large groups and in clubs and schools and a lot of facilities. Um, the money's not coming in. So um, even small businesses aren't even making money as well as the large corporations. So how has this been affecting you and what are some tips that you could give people to like, you know, um, either get funding or tips to still keep business going or selling to customers during this whole pandemic? Got it. Got it. That's a great question, Anne-Marie. Um, the thing is with, with me um, and, and my line of work, my line of business, uh, with Bijou Bijou, it's an e-commerce platform. And believe it or not, although you would think that people are staying home, they're unsure about their finances, they would spend less. They're, I'm actually seeing a spike in sales online because people are home, they're bored, they have nothing to do. And so retail therapy comes into play. And if you're buying sure. to build someone else up, why not? Mm -hmm. So I've actually seen an increase in sales um, on the product aspect, the financial strategy aspect where I sit down with women and we take a look at their relationship with money, um, establish a new relationship and also implement strategies to help them grow their finances, whether that's through business, personal or both. Um, believe it or not, with this COVID-19, it has really woken some people up, whether it's uh, through a job loss or a cut in pay or, you know, just the, the fact that the, I'd say about 90% of the stimulus package is going to small businesses. So a lot of people are awakening like, Katiana, how can I get my hands on this money? And of course, the buzzword right now is stocks. Right, everybody and their mom wants to invest in stocks, and they're yeah. who do they turn to? Hey, Katiana, I know you teach stock stock market. You know, is this a good time to get started? Can I get started with two hundred bucks? Is it true that I could turn this amount of money? Like, what should I buy? Should I buy these airline stocks? And so, literally, like, I am busier than ever. And, you know, I, believe it or not, COVID-19 has been a sort of a blessing for people within my field, you know, mm -hmm. anybody with an e-commerce business or some sort of virtual business or anybody within the financial industry, I'm sure is, is seeing a, a big surge in business. Um, other people are not so fortunate. You know, there are people who are like, for example, hairstylists. I actually did my own hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, same I just here, did my own same hair. Here, same hair. <laughs> exactly. <It's> a, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we, we kind of have to get creative on that. You know, um, nails uh, have been looking a little crazy, you yeah. know, so um, any, any type of body contact has been suffering. However, mm -hmm. there are some ways, believe it or not, for these businesses to still thrive, um, to still create some income like my hairstylist she's actually selling um 
bottles that she has put together for hair treatments to keep your hair moisturized while it's breathing, while it's not under the weave or whatever styles that you're used to. So mm-hmm. she's making her money that way. You know, there's so there's a plethora of things that these businesses can do um, to to pivot their business and, and still get some income coming in. That's definitely yeah. true. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, the second part of your question was how can these businesses get funding to survive, you know, not working for 60 days or in, in some cases up in New York and Jersey area, 90 days. They, mm-hmm. they, their quarantine has been um, extended until the end of May. So, you know, how does a business survive someone who's not virtual? Um, there are some there are some funding opportunities out there, and I guess we can kind of get into that a little bit, you know, later in our conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, and there are some ways for you to position yourself to where, when something like this happens again, because it will. If it's not a if it's not a virus, it's a hurricane. If it's not a hurricane, it's an earthquake. If it's not an earthquake, it's a war. It is always going to be something. So you want to position yourself to where your business and your personal finance is not you know, do or die if you can't open or if you're not functioning for 60 to 90 days. Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. definitely true. I also see a spike in trading as well. A lot of people have turned to trading, um, which is similar to stocks as well, but not exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, you would be able to speak more on it because, you know, you're the expert here. Um, But I have seen a a spike in trading and um, buying stocks because the stocks are so low at the moment. Um, um, And what else have I seen? Uh, COVID-19 has really been making people have to get creative because when you can't go to these physical locations, um, I've also seen like women, they can't get their nails done, but now they're turning to the, um, the, the glue on nails that they sell online instead. And they're already pre-designed, pre-cut, pre-sized, pre-shaped and everything. Just like when you go to the nail salon, but now you just buy it and you press them on and you go about your day and you don't have to sit at the nail salon for like over an hour to purchase not to purchase but you know to get your nails done so a lot of businesses have to get creative like you said um I've seen photographers they're doing FaceTime photo shoots um yeah what else have I seen everything is just becoming more digital and online based which is expected because um the technology is advancing and with technology advancing more and more things are going to be online um, we were actually talking about cryptocurrency at some point, no more physical money. So everything yeah. is going to be like cloud based, everything is going to be online. So I think that it's it's getting everybody ready to, you know, um, to step into that technological based era. Yeah. So yes. Yeah, exactly. And just to add on to that, we're stepping into the world of 5G. You know, all conspiracy theories aside, this is not a conspiracy theory, you know, uh, conversation, but we are stepping into the world of 5G blockchain technology, which is uh, pretty much married to uh, uh, cryptocurrency, digital currency, okay, and artificial intelligence, all right? These are the three things that are going to rule the next decade. And if you if if you want to survive, whether that's through a business or your personal skill or your or your career, I would encourage you guys who are watching this to to um add one of those to your belt. If not all three, definitely add one of those to your belt. How can you incorporate artificial intelligence into your into your business or into your your career? You know, whether that's learning to code, learning how to fix robots, learning how to come up with artificial intelligence. Or if you're a business, for example, um, I know Amazon is doing this with uh, with fulfillment um, uh, uh, warehouses. If you're if you're an e-commerce business and you have a big warehouse taking care of your fulfillment, how can you incorporate things like image recognition, you know, or automatic uh, printing machines that print out labels and you know so on and so forth? If you're a trader, how can you uh, or or a financial strategist like I am, how can you incorporate robo advisors? into your into your advice or into your um man money management you know um when it comes to 5g there's so many different things look into it it's not just about a conspiracy oh my god we're all gonna die from 
5G. That's not even what I'm talking about. There's so many advancements that are going to happen with the power of 5G. How can you use that to your advantage? And of course, cryptocurrency, blockchain technology, how can you use that? How can you start accepting Bitcoin as a, as a currency or, or lithium or, or any of the other uh, currencies out there? You know, so you want to pivot and, and, and uh, evolve with the times or else you're going to get left behind. And it's harsh to say, but that's that's the reality. That's that's history. You know, it's happened in the past. And if anything, we know history repeats itself. We have to evolve and, and uh, keep up, you know. That's definitely true. Now, with all of the updates and upgrades we have to adapt to as humans, I think, well, not humans, individuals, I'm sorry. <laughs> One of the, the most important things that we have to understand first is um, operating as an individual employee and operating as a business owner in America. America is considered a corporation, like a one major corporation, but a lot of people don't understand the difference between being a business owner, um, um, owning a business structure, filing your taxes either um, with your own taxes or a separate EIN for your business taxes, um, and being an employee. So they don't understand the benefits. Um, I have many friends who are operating as a business, but they are, you know, receiving um, large sums of money every week, monthly, yearly, but yet they don't have business credit, they don't have a business license, um, and they don't have, they, they're not able to receive many of the benefits that businesses can because they just don't have the knowledge or they don't want it because they don't understand the benefit of, of it. So how can people start making their side hustles legit? And what would you tell someone um, how could you convince someone that doesn't want to make their side hustle like a legit business structure um, in America? How would you convince them? Well, okay. So there, there's many layers to, to what you just um, asked. All right. Um, number one, I, the, the fact that you um, equated the United States of America as a corporation is a very powerful statement. And, uh, and I, I don't think there's a lot of people I don't think that realize it. And the United States, its laws, especially its tax laws, are designed, right, to, to um, benefit businesses. Look at the stimulus package, the, 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 the CARES Act, right? I'd say about, I can honestly say about 90% of that okay, is going to, to, to businesses, small, medium sized and large corporations. If you look at $2 trillion divided by how many people in the United States, about 350 million people, if you look at that, it should, it should equate to about 10 grand per, per person, all right, 10, 10 grand per person that is working, all right, so 10 grand, from 10 grand per person, we all, most, well, not all of us, right? Most people who made under a certain amount got to a $1,200 check. Mm -hmm. And if they're married, they got double that. And then they got an extra 500 per child in the house under 18. That's a huge difference from the 10 grand per person. That's so where true. did the rest of that money co go to? It went to corporations. It went to businesses. Okay, so that's just an example of what of the benefits of being a business because you could have gotten the business funding and your 1200 or 2400 or whatever else. That's all free money. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there I see on my Facebook, oh, $1,200 is not money. That's because you don't know what to do with it. $1,200 coming into your account without you having to trade in your time or without you having to sell something is free money. Mm -hmm. All right. Don't worry about whether, oh, it came from taxes. It's really my money. At the end of the day, you did not have to clock in for it and you didn't have to sell any services or products for it. It came into sure. your account directly. All right. Mm -hmm. So anybody who knows how money works can make that twelve hundred dollars work for them, whether that's paying a bill that you're behind or investing it into into a, a certain stock or a certain uh, 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 not business, but like a certain industry or purchasing a house or purchasing land, whatever it is, you can make that twelve hundred dollars work for you. OK, so imagine multiplying that and having that for your personal and also getting a, a portion, maybe another twelve hundred dollars for your business. OK, mm -hmm. now you're getting twenty four hundred or, 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 you know, an extra however much you got, you know, just because you had yourself and also your business. So that's one aspect of it. Another aspect is that 
at the end of the day, it's not about how much money you make. All right. It's about how much money you keep. That's okay. True. I'm going to repeat yeah. that. It is not about how much money you make. It's about how much money you keep. How many of you guys know football players, basketball players, uh, movie stars, people that look like you and me who made it to fame, who had a lot of money, and a few years down the line, they were broke? That's fine. Right? Yeah. How many, or how, how can you go from making billions, I'm sorry, millions of dollars, right? There, Yeah, there are billionaires out there. Once you reach billionaire status, you kind of know something about money, right? Mm -hmm. But there's so many people who, who've gotten the quick million dollars, but somehow they're broke. Matter of fact, uh, about 90% of people who win the lottery, they, they end up being broke within the next two years. It's not about how much money you make. That's foolproof about, it's about how much money you keep and how can you keep more of the money that you make. Taxes. That should be a course in itself right there because mm -hmm. many people don't realize that the more money that you make, the larger expenses that you make, um, your bills get more expensive, your car note gets more expensive. Um, everything becomes more expensive. I saw the breakdown of someone that makes $500,000 and I saw what they typically keep and it's like between three to five grand a month and you're making like over 500 grand um well if was it for a month i believe they're making like over 500 grand a month but still with everything that they're um that they're spending on they don't keep that money like they keep very little of it and it's amazing to make that amount of money but then your living expenses get much higher and what are you really doing to you know make every dollar you spend triple or quadruple and make it come back to you? Are you putting it in investment accounts? Are you putting it into a business that's going to be where you're selling digital products or some kind of product where you're going to be able to get your money back? If you're not investing it back, then you're really just spending and investing into other businesses and they're getting richer by the minute and you don't realize that, yeah, I have 500 grand that I'm making, but yet uh, every second, every minute, every hour, I'm probably growing, gonna go broke because I don't have a good idea of what money management should look like or investments or how to make my money work for me. Because some people make money while they sleep and yes. that should be the goal. Everywhere you go, you're getting a notification. This person just purchased a product or this person just booked you for this amount of time and it should be recurring because money is supposed to be... Um, it's supposed to circulate. You're not just yes. supposed to spend it and then it doesn't come back to you because then you're not going to be left with anything. So that right there should be a class all on its own. So let yeah. us know when it's going to be available. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And and there's there's two things. There there are two things, two enemies of wealth, all right? And two enemies of wealth are are um detrimental to your uh, detriment to your health, some sort of health issue, right? Or, or um, and, and the other one is taxes, mm -hmm. all right? If you don't take care of both of those, if health doesn't get you, the taxes will, all right? But the, the health issue, okay, you're, you're alive, you're well, you're doing your hustle, boom, you fall sick, boom, you get COVID-19, right? Or you, boom, you get, because there's other things out there, right? It's not like all diseases suddenly stopped and then mm -hmm. everything is all about COVID-19. COVID mm -hmm. But there's other things that can stop your hustle as well. So you definitely want to put things in protection. That's another conversation to still protect your business, to still protect your, your income, to still protect you as your biggest asset, your ability to work as your biggest asset. There's ways to protect that. And there's ways to protect your business and your wages from taxes. And the best way to do that is a hire a tax strategist cpa tax person everybody needs to know a tax person all right and also educate yourself on basic tax laws all right so when you're when you're you know for example an event planner yeah you're getting hundreds of dollars for promoting an event and you're putting that in your bank account and it looks so damn good you're looking at your bank account and you're sitting on that nice number and you're you know you're balling and you just feel good about yourself like yes i made this money all of my own but at the end of the year you got to pay such a huge portion of it into taxes why because you don't know any better because you're getting taxed as an employee instead of as a business Mm -hmm. 
right? As a business, you can write off the food that you eat. You can write off your corporate retreats. You can write off your computer that, that you buy. You can write off, you know, education that, that you spent money on. You know, if let's say you decide to book me for a course to learn how to trade the stock market or to just look at, you know, basic money management uh, uh, tools, you can deduct that from your taxes. There's so many different um, tax strategies that can be implemented when you actually own a business entity. Your business can pay for everything, even your car. You know what I mean? Like every single thing. The only thing that you cannot use your business for is to pay your rent. That's the only thing. But you can uh, purchase property. You can purchase income properties with an LLC. People, real estate moguls, that's all they do to be able to protect their real estate empire. Every single duplex, every single multifamily home that they own is under an LLC, is under a corporation, you know, and and we can even get into the aspect of protection. You know, you don't think about getting sued, but get, uh, God forbid you get into a car accident. Everybody's still alive. You know, you got your little PIP or you got your little Geico full coverage, but someone decides to go after you and your assets and your $100,000 in the bank. They can have all of that if it's not protected or put in, in into the right business account. That's you know, there's so many. True. I could go in, Amory, <laughs> on the on the reasons why it's so important to, to um, incorporate your hustle, you know, whatever it is, no matter how big, how small. But you want to know something that I've realized is that um, as the generations transition from one to the the younger generations, um, the older to the younger ones, um, I've seen a growth of entrepreneurship and um, 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 younger individuals realizing that it's important to build generational wealth. So I look at you know, the elders always letting us know that, oh, you have to find one job, work at that job for 40 to 50 years, retire, and then you can have your heaven on earth or your honey, your milk or whatever it is that you want. Mm -hmm. But now we're seeing children millionaires, we're seeing people that are way younger, get to that point um, and it, and it t- it's taking way less time just because they're using their gifts and they're finding a way to be creative or use the platforms that are available to them now. And I realized that, um, you know, we, we don't really have that knowledge. We didn't really have that knowledge back then or mm-hmm. get it because they didn't deem it to be important because they, a, a lot of elders didn't start businesses until after their 40, 50 years with their companies, you know, and then they were like, I'm going to go start a business. And they start a mom, they start a mom and pop shop. But even when you're helping your mom and your daddy or grandmother or grandfather in the mom and pop shop, they still encourage you to get a job or you're running their business, you know? So a lot of individuals don't have the knowledge that you just gave. And now it's becoming relevant because a lot of other people have their own businesses or want their own businesses or want to figure out ways to build generational wealth. And it involves understanding everything you just mentioned and so much more. So that's something that I wanted to mention because it's just been changing rapidly yeah it's beautiful so yes yeah and and you you take a look at some of the reasons why right our parents you know um my parents came here in the in the late 90s okay but a lot of a lot of uh the diaspora people from haiti people from jamaica you know the whole caribbean or or other countries they came around the 60s and 70s where everything was beautiful here and Mm -hmm. when america was great right quo (laughs) quo whatever that means Mm -hmm. where where literally you could put you could buy a whole house for six thousand dollars where tuition was you know you could you can go to college for a grand you know eight dollars an hour was actually like an amazing salary you you look at the 80s for example what do you think let's look at the 80s what do you think the median salary was in the 80s in the entire united states um probably well I was gonna say six dollars, but I'm not sure. I don't know what the income was looking at around that time. Oh, I'm not sure, but I do know one thing. I do know is that um, back then, kids could work part time and still be able to pay off their college tuition. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing I know, but I don't know the income for yeah. So the 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 average income, all right, in the '80s was about fifty thousand dollars a year. That was the median income. All right. Of course, people made less and, 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 you know, people made more. But the average American, you walk down the street, most likely you ask them how much money they're making. It was about fifty thousand dollars a year, which is even enough this year. Well, it's close to 
it's close enough where every a lot of people are making about 30 38 40 grand in average positions yeah so. you're absolutely right 2020 that's 40 years later by the way the 80s was 40 years ago mm-hmm. just, just a reminder are mm-hmm. you little 80s babies i'm one of them mm-hmm. we're turning 40 this decade okay mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh but yeah 40 years later all right the average income for the average American is $55,000 a year, 40 years later. Mm-hmm. All right. So does, does it, does it make sense that going to go to, going to school, getting a good job, you know, getting that job that's going to give you a pension. I don't, who gets a pension anymore? Unless you're a government worker or from the army, who gives a pension anymore? Mm-hmm. You know, like all of that stuff that your parents were used to in the 80s. I didn't even go as far back as the 60s and 70s. We're just talking about in the 80s when your parents first came to the United States, where they went and, you know, got their nursing degree because every Haitian parent is a nurse, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody's a nurse. When they when they went to school, got good grades and became a nurse and they're making their $50,000 a year and living, you know, in West Pember Pines, you know, or, you know, living in a five bedroom home mm-hmm. with no debt, nothing. And their kids are all fed. So 40 years later $55,000 I can't enough. even rent I can't even rent an apartment in downtown Fort Lauderdale with making $55,000 a year mm-hmm. no way absolutely no way so where am I gonna go to make more than that no job is paying that not down here in Florida mm-hmm. how am I gonna make that I'm gonna have to create my own opportunity and look at us millennials you know uh millennials I I, I say millennials are the, the generation that was born like late 80s and early 90s Mm-hmm. Um, Gen Z's are the ones that are born, you know, mid nineties and late, um, late nineties. Cause mm-hmm. I know there's a confusion about that, but us millennials, when we graduate, I graduated high school in 2006. Mm-hmm. I went to college and graduated college in 2010 by the, in 2010 was right after 2008, mm-hmm. 2008 market crash. Nobody was hiring. I had a beautiful, shiny little degree in my hand in economics, thinking I'm bad and bougie because I got my little bachelor's. That's what my mom said, right? Go get your bachelor's and your life will be great. You know, you're going to get a great job, get married, have beautiful kids, and then you'll retire at 60 and life will be beautiful. But that's Mm -hmm. not what happened. There was nobody hiring. Oh, you got an economics degree? You got a little bachelor's degree? All right, so do these uh, 40,000 other people. What else? What what makes you special? What else? What you got? So what I do, I went back and I'm like, okay, well, let me make myself special. Let me go get my master's degree. By the time I come out, $60,000 in debt, getting my master's. All right, here I am. I got my master's. Okay, beautiful. Where's your experience? You've got to be kidding me. I was in school this whole time trying to make myself special because I wasn't special enough four years ago when I had my little shiny degree. Mm-hmm. I went in back and got another shiny degree. Okay, great, but you have no experience. So we're going to pay you 30 grand. Take it or leave it. Because someone else is going to take it. I have no choice but to be an entrepreneur. I have no choice but to open my business and say, okay, well, you're going to pay me $30,000 a year. How about I go open my own business and pay myself $30,000 a month? That's true. Well, as an entrepreneur, you have ways to create multiple streams of income for yourself that a job is not going to give you. You know, the, the income is limited, but when you're an entrepreneur, it's unlimited. As long as you allow your mind to create whatever it is that you can come up with and find a way to sell it to people that might need it. Because the real, the real, um, the real, how could I say this? The way it really is set up is as an entrepreneur, you have to figure out what problem can you solve for people. And then from there, you sell the solution. And so as long as you can figure out several solutions, you can have several streams of income. So that's how I look at it. So, yeah. And it's not to put down anybody who actually went out there and got a career because at the end of the day, entrepreneurship is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's really not. There are still ways you don't have to necessarily be a business owner or or a CEO and, you know, boss, I'm a boss. Like that life is not for everybody because there are days, Anne-Marie, where I didn't know what I was going to eat, how I was going to feed myself, how I was going to pay my rent. Like that life is not for everybody. Okay. Mm -hmm. Some people have children to feed. Some people have, you know, bigger responsibilities than I did. And they don't have that luxury of wondering what they're going to eat tomorrow. Okay. So, so I'm not saying this to down anybody who has a career. However, there's still ways for people who are still, who are, you know, working for a company who have a W-2 to still maximize their income by, by incorporating themselves. 
And that's, a, that's something we can get, you know, you can schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me and we can definitely get a little bit deeper into that. But there are ways for you to still have those same beautiful deductions that you would get if you were to open up an LLC, an LLC or an S Corp or C Corp or so on and so forth. So just wanted to add that little tidbit for you guys, okay? Okay. So one of the questions I wanted to ask you was, um, could you list the different organizations and companies that are currently offering funding for crisis funding during the pandemic? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's another thing that, um, that I actually should have added um, when we talked about the benefits of having an LLC, what, what, mm -hmm. which I already kind of touched on. So not only is the stimulus package, let's say you don't want anything to do with the stimulus. I don't want any loans, Katiana, like that's not for me. I'm just looking for grants. There are a plethora of, of big corporations that are putting back into small businesses. And it could be somebody who's a hairstylist or someone who's a barber or someone who's a massage therapist or someone who's a YouTuber you know, or, or Instagram model, like all of these, any type of or influencer, any type of, um, of hustle, I guess you could say, where you're getting compensated, you know, for, for service, it can be considered a business, especially if it says it on paper. Mm -hmm. And so when you go to these large corporations like Facebook, for example, Facebook is putting $300 million back into small businesses. Oh, wow. Now, if that if that's not easy money, I don't know what is. $300 million into Because this is what's going to happen. People are like, Facebook, that's such a big company. Oh, so many people are going to apply. I won't qualify. And they won't apply. They're not going to apply. And you're probably, some of you guys are watching and you're thinking it and you're probably not going to apply either. You you have a business. You Oh, I don't have enough revenue. Oh, I, did, I barely did anything with the business. All I have is an EIN or I don't even have an EIN yet or I don't, you're not going to apply. And so that $300 million, guess what? It's going to go to the person who applied. So go apply. Go apply. So um, it's several more. different grants. Yes. So, th so basically, um, they're not live yet. They've been advertising it since the beginning, but they're going to have several different um, categories for, you know, people who've been in business this long or people who have this amount of revenue every year because every business um, needs different things. Because some people, some of you out there, a good thousand dollar grant will do wonders for your business. That's you know, true. you can order new inventory, new equipment, whatever it is, or put it into a Facebook ad campaign and boom, you turn that thousand dollars into ten thousand dollars. Like it's it, you know, it can make a big difference. Some people need a little more. They need a good ten ten thousand dollars. So, you know, obviously. Um, another one is Shea Moisture. I actually applied for that one. Mm -hmm. So Shea Moisture um has partnered with uh We Buy Black. Okay, I don't know if you guys have heard of We Buy Black. They actually approached me like in the infancy stages of Bijou Bijou, and I've seen their growth. Amazing company, by the way. Um, they have a $100,000 grant that they're giving back into Black-owned businesses. So hello, <laughs> Black-owned businesses out there, go apply. Because people are thinking, oh man, my business is too small. Or no, I, I won't qualify. And so who's going to qualify? The people that actually apply. That's it. That's true. Um, yes. And Shea Moisture itself is doing a business incubator. So basically, even if your business is just a startup, all right, because it's, it's not all about the money. It's about the resources. OK, so maybe you won't qualify for a grant per se because, you know, whatever, you don't have an EIN number or your business is not set up. But at least you can get access to their incubator. And Shea Moisture, they're going to connect you to the right people to help you grow your business. Sometimes that's even better than getting a $5,000 grant or a $10,000 grant. Because now you have someone in your corner telling you how to move from A to B to C to D and so on and so forth. Make sense? That's definitely um, true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're also giving about $5 million back into, into the community. So those are three that I mentioned. Hold on. Let me pull up. Um, I had already. Give me one second. There is another one, I believe. Okay, so I talked about the Shea Moisture. Okay, hold on here. I had it all set up here too. <laughs> all right, um, the Red Backpack Fund, okay? Mm -hmm. This is, uh, you can go on to globalliving.org. So these are the women that um, that made Spanx, all right? So they're giving back, uh, I don't, I think it was a $5 million to support female entrepreneurs in the wake of COVID-19. 
So it's called the Red Backpack Fund. You can go to globalliving.org. Okay, quick right. question. Mm -hmm. So um, let's say that um, you are a startup because one of the one of the things that I would I would think or mention that's causing a lot of people to not apply is the fact that they're a startup or even if they have been in business for a while, they're not making the type of revenue that they want to make. And mm -hmm. that alone discourages them from applying for um, from applying for several different loans. Would you still encourage them to go ahead and apply even if they don't meet certain qualifications or they're not making enough revenue? Okay, so with the with the stimulus package, um, they have closed the applications for for the loans as of now. All right. Um, if if they do uh, get more money, then more opportunities will will come up as far as the loans. So that's no longer an option for for any business. Okay. Now, as far as the grants that I'm mentioning from the big corporations like Shea Moisture, um, Facebook, and so on and so forth, We Buy Black, and so on and so forth, um, I've applied. These are things that I've actually applied for, okay? This, this mm -hmm. is not something I just read online. I've actually applied. And on the applications, the only thing they ask you is how long have you been in business? And most of them, you would have to have been in business before COVID-19. OK, mm -hmm. so that would be before February of this year. So they, they'll because remember, this whole this is the whole point of these funds is to help those who have been impacted by COVID-19. Right? right. And so you can't just go open up an LLC after you hear you, you watch this live here, this video and, and go apply. Now, are, are there going to be opportunities for funding for you? Does that mean don't go, um, you know, register your business? No, it doesn't mean that there will be opportunities. It's just that these ones that I'm mentioning now may not be the right ones for you. That's all they ask you for. Not one of them asked me how much was my revenue. Um, I think one of them did. And it was, it wasn't like, Oh, well, she's only making like two grand in a whole year. She opened her business and only made two grand. Then we don't need to see her. It's more of like, how much are you going to need? You know what I mean? So if, yeah, if you only made two grand in a year, right. Okay. So a $500 grant will be enough for you, mm -hmm. you know, cause anything will help. So it's, it's not like, Oh, you need to make this amount of money or else you will not qualify. Like, it's not like that at all for, for the grants. Um, for future loans, yes, all of that will matter. We can discuss that a little bit further on how to position yourself to be able to get these loans. And, uh, and are, is your business even ready for loan? You know, that's, so true. that's another, another conversation. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, that um, as I mentioned, it, that's, that would be one of, the, um, one of the things that's stopping people from applying mm -hmm. for certain resources and a lot of people and entrepreneurs don't know that there are grants and other resources available to either help fund their startup or to help them to acquire certain resources that will help um, operating your business much smoother so yeah yes definitely um, one um, one of the things that I wanted to go over as well is what type of services do you offer Yes. Before I get into that, by the way, I did have one more that um that a lot of my friends actually did um, receive. So mm. within two weeks, you you can get this. Okay. It's called the Donnie Fund. So it's D O O N I E Fund. Okay. So basically, they're they're giving uh, up to five hundred bucks. Okay. Most of my business, I'm part of this little biscuit business group, mm -hmm. and uh, most of them got it. So it's a very easy easy money. Again, there's no minimum revenue or any of that. Um, you know, to to qualify. So just wanted to add to that. Okay. Awesome. Back to your question. Yes. <laughs> um, what are the services that I I provide? Well. Mm -hmm. When it comes to money, when it comes to finances and, uh, you know, creating wealth or, or handling your personal finances, it starts up here. Okay. And it's, uh, and believe it or not, it's a mind, body, and spirit um, relationship, right? A lot of people are always asking me for strategies. Katiana, what should I do with my money? I just got $1,200. $1, um, how can I flip it? You know, let's talk about your relationship with money. Because I could give you all of the strategies. I could tell you, go buy this very specific stock at this very specific time. And this is where you cash out. If you don't have the right relationship with money, if you don't believe in yourself, it's not going to happen. You're not going to do it. Mm -hmm. So 
just like I mentioned earlier, how there's a plethora of, of um, funding out there for businesses, a lot of people are not even going to bother. They're going to come up with excuses of why they won't qualify. Oh, I don't make enough money. Oh, I've only been in business for two months. Oh, well, you know, I'm a hairstylist. They're looking for more like tech people who come up with apps and stuff. I, I'm mm -hmm. not big enough. Right. And so we got to think, we got to dig deep into why are you thinking that way? You know, That's what true. was, yeah. What, what was, where did that come from? Right. What was the relationship with money um, that you observed from your parents? Right. You, so I don't know if you know this, but the first seven years of your life determine who you're going to be for the rest of your life. That's true. Yeah. And, and so why is it that some of these rich kids, make stupid decisions, but somehow they're still rich, you know, because they were brought up in a household where the programming for, for uh, having a good relationship with abundance was implemented. Right. Yeah. And so we need, we need to dig deep. We need to see what is going on in the mind, the spirit, and of, of course the body, because health is wealth. That's another aspect, right? Mm -hmm. Right. We need to look at all of these things. And, uh, and then we decide what is the relationship you want to have with money. Okay. That's so there's, true. yeah, exactly. There's a lot of people that I sit down with that have a great relationship with money. They just want to multiply what they already have. So it doesn't necessarily need to be a bad thing. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have a poverty mindset. I work with a lot of, of, of well off Haitian women who have, you know, great uh, investments in their portfolio that are sitting on a lot of money, but they just want to multiply it, you know? And then I've, I work with some people who have nothing who basically learned it from their parents and they want to change that. Right. And so that's the first package that I offer. We dig deep, deep into your relationship with money. We look at your money mindset. Okay. We establish a new money mindset and then we put together a plan. All right. And uh, that's my first package. The second package, I dig into the stock market. This is where everybody slides into my DMs. God, Deanna, what, sh what stock should I buy? Okay. Let's talk about how to even buy a stock, how to open a brokerage account how to decide which company to invest in. Is that the right company to invest in for your investment goals? What are your investment goals? Are you a long-term uh, investor, short-term investor? Do you want to make a daily income? What, what is it that you're looking for? So that's the beginner's course. And then we go into the intermediate courses and advanced courses and so on and so forth. But um, that's, that's the personal finance aspect. Now, the business finance aspect, I help um, kind of tie in I have a team of, of ladies that work with me that help tie in the personal finance into the business finance. It's not that different. It's really not. We just focus more on tax strategies and, uh, in you know, little strategies here and there that you can't do on a, with your personal finance, how to leverage debt to make more money, mm -hmm. you know, how to use debt properly, how to, um, create a, a business credit though, with your EIN number, uh, without having to tie in your personal credit. So these are little things that I go over and that's another package. Okay, so pretty much three packages that you offer, right? Uh, three personal finance packages, okay. yes. And then um, we have a business finance package which ties all of that in because I still need to look at your mindset when it comes to, to business. Because and that's the most important part. That's yeah. the most important part, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. That is definitely yeah. true. Um, a lot of people believe that the mindset just applies to physical exercise and and, uh, and um, motivation and you know just um typical things that we see um but they don't realize that your mindset about money is just important as you know you trying to get fit your your mindset is important when it comes to anything you're trying to change in your life period so as long as you have the right mindset and you're thinking the right things you have the right information you have the right resources Make sure Katiana is one of your resources. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then you can change a lot, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm not for everybody. I'm going to tell you straight up. Uh, a lot of people, they hire me and they say, I want you to be my accountability coach. Well, that's exactly what I'm going to give you. Did you do your homework? How much money did you spend on food yesterday? What's going on? What happened to that thousand dollars you said you were going to save this month? I'm that type of person. So I'm not for everybody. If not, you're not ready for that type of accountability, then I'm not the right person for you. But I will tell you this, you want to find a, a coach that's going to train your mind and help you create a, a better relationship with money because that's where it starts. <laughs>
you want to know one of the other things I was going to mention as well. Um, when it comes to finding clients, being able to say no to the wrong type of clients is just mm-hmm. as important because your business becomes way more valuable where you're not saying yes to everybody. You know, you're only attracting the people that you really want to serve and it's bringing in more income. It's bringing in more value and more of the right type of customer. So that's something important you just mentioned. You're not for everybody and you shouldn't be. You have your own niche. You have your own target audience and that's exactly who you should serve. So that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I tell people when I get on a discovery call with people, this is not a, a call where I get to prove myself to you. If anything, it's the other way around, right? Because when I start working with you, you become part of my portfolio. Are you someone that I want to show off as my portfolio in my portfolio? Because let's say, you know, you book a session with me, Anne-Marie, and, uh, and we, we go dig deep into, into everything. We implement a plan. And next thing you know, your, your sales are growing, you know, you're saving more money. Like I want to show you off. I want to say Anne-Marie went through the plan. She actually stuck to it. She did what what, um, she said she was going to do. And now I can show you off to the world, right? And so on and so forth. You can show me off to the world. So it's a symbiotic relationship. It's a a business relationship. So I don't want to work with anybody who's just going to talk and say, oh, Katiana, I want to save more money. Or Katiana, I want to make more money and and not want to do the work. No, we're not going to work together. (laughs) That's definitely true. And I can't help. And that's another thing I had to learn. I can't help everybody. You know, my, my prices are not, are not crazy because there's people charging um, crazy prices out there. And, mm-hmm. and I feel like it's a little unfair because there is a smaller, um, not a smaller, but there's a portion of the population who really needs it. Mm-hmm. Right. So my prices are, are directed towards that portion of the population. But there are some people who are like, oh, my God, I can't afford that. Well, I, I'm sorry. You want to make more money? I, you have to you know, you're, I'm not going to lower my prices just to please you because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you're not, you're, people don't value free. They don't. How many free courses, yeah. yeah. How many free courses have you, have you signed up for in the past and how many have you actually uh, followed through with them? None. Well, if it's a free <laughs> webinar, then maybe, but there are yes. so many free webinars nowadays that I forget. Yeah. I have one <laughs> in and yeah no no and <laughs> so. even those free no I'm glad you mentioned that even those free webinars where you're like oh they're dropping gems on top of gems on top of gems and you're like oh my god I'm gonna go research this oh mm-hmm. my god I'm gonna go look at it and how many times did you actually go and research it go right to sleep <laughs> you know yeah yeah value true. free they don't value free but let's say you pay 20 bucks for that for that same webinar that was free 20 bucks is affordable $20, you spend twenty dollars on on you know BS anyway, right? Mm-hmm. So why not spend it on on a webinar? That's so, true. Yeah, you spend that, and you're like, oh, I spent twenty bucks on that. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna make this twenty bucks work for me. I'm gonna go look into what she talked about. I'm gonna go research that Shea Moisture uh, um, fund that you talked about. I'm gonna research that Facebook fund so I can get my five thousand dollar grant. So I can get mm-hmm. my five hundred dollar grant, right? So it, it's a it's a mentality thing. That's definitely true. What strategy I like the most is when they give you an intro to what it is and you have to uh, pay a subscription fee or some type of fee to continue with the classes. Like you could get Mm -hmm. like a two minute info session or a two minute call or something, but then, or 10 minutes or 15 minutes, but that hour you get charged for it that way that you can, you can actually value what you're investing Mm -hmm. your money into. So yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's it's all it's all mental, and these are things that I go into, um, especially in my business my business sessions, because um, a lot of times we we feel like because we're not our own customers that people don't value what we have to offer, and so we have to like drag our prices down or offer it for free just so we could prove ourselves. No, you're not here to prove yourself. You're not here for that. The person is looking for your services. They need your help. All right. So now you need to find out what is their why? Why are they reaching out to you? What problem do they need a a solution for? And how can you provide that solution? That's all these discovery calls and these conversations are for. That's all it's for. It's not for you to say, oh, my God, I have this shiny degree that I paid 60 grand for. Oh, my God, I have this portfolio 
of X figures that I've been trading for the past 10 years. Oh my God, I know about stocks. Oh my God, I know about this and throwing big words and trying to, no, that's not what it's about. I know what I know. Whether you believe that I know it or not, I still know it. <laughs> that's true. Right? That's true. And you came to me for a reason. You Clearly you clicked, you clicked on my profile, you slid into my DMs, you gave me a phone call for a reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is not an interview for me as the expert. It's an interview for you. And what is your problem and can I solve it? That's it. Definitely. Yes. <laughs> um, one of the last questions that I'm going to ask to tie everything up, which is something we kind of went over already. And it's something that you offer in your service about uh, um, your, your money mindset. Um, mm -hmm. Why is it important to understand the difference between managing personal and business funds? Mm -hmm. um, and you can kind of give us a short answer if you want. Um, but I do know that it does tie into your money mindset package, right? Mm -hmm. It does. It does. Personal finance, um, the biggest difference between, believe it or not, there's a lot of similarities. But the biggest difference um, with personal finance and business finance is that uh, business finance, you, we focus a lot more on taxes, mm -hmm. okay? And also um, how to leverage debt. Because on a personal finance, you're taught, hey, get a credit card and then you're going to go Black Friday shopping and buy a nice, you know, $400 TV and, and hang it on your wall. That TV is not making you any money. All right. Or you're going to fix your credit. Right. You're going to, you know, uh, 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 get one of those like credit repair things where you pay 60 bucks a month and your credit is on fleek. And then you're going to go buy that BMW or that Range Rover or, you know, that nice car that you that you want. And you're going to pay two, three hundred dollars a month for that car. Is that car really making you money unless you're Ubering or. I, I don't even know, like what <laughs> or doing a, a Postmates or something, is that car making you money? Right. Mm -hmm. And it's depreciating. So we teach you how to actually leverage debt in in your business to make more money. OK, so you're not going to go get get uh, you're not going to go borrow money to buy a TV just to sit there and watch it in your business. Right. You're going to borrow money to purchase an equipment that's going to get you better gigs, better quality pictures, better mm -hmm. quality videos. Right. And then that those gigs are going to pay for the camera that you finance. Mm -hmm. Right. Or, or, or you're going to borrow uh, uh, $5,000 to invest in Facebook ads. And those Facebook ads are going to 10 X your sales. So now those say okay. the new sales that you're going to have those 10, $15,000 in sales are going to end up paying for that $5,000 that you, that you paid back. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean that you borrowed, I'm sorry. That's going to pay, help pay the $5,000 that you borrowed. Right. So you want to use debt to, to grow your business. All right. So that's another thing that we want to change your relationship with debt because people think, Oh my God, debt. Oh, oh no, I don't want to owe anything. I, I want my credit to be 850 and 720. So I can have an MX and you know, what's the point of having good credit if you don't know how to use it. Right. Well, that's true. Well, that's something I learned. Um, going in early into entrepreneurship as well and you know having a side hustle is that once you purchase something you have to figure out did I make this money back did what mm -hmm. I invest in invested into help me make my money back and mm -hmm. when like I I I um as you know am a photographer and so I've invested into different photography equipment and I go back and I look over my inventory and I see how much I spent on certain things and I'm like ah I made this um I used this camera or this piece of equipment and I was able to make my money back with it because I put it to work you know mm -hmm. so that's very important as well what you just mentioned yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then, and you know, we, we look at the long term. We want to see how this business is going to end up paying you. Um, how, if this business is going to, we look at your exit strategy as well. Mm -hmm. You know, what, um, are you planning on selling this business in the next five to 10 years? Are you planning on um, passing it down to your children or, you know, whatever the case may be, do you want to mm -hmm. get bought out by a big company like Walmart, Facebook, Amazon, you know, th that's people's extra strategies, you know? So, um, so th th these are some, I guess, different aspects that you don't necessarily think about in your personal finance, mm -hmm. but there are similarities like having a budget for your business, right? Saying that I'm only going to spend X amount on an advertising this month. I'm only going to X, um, spend X amount on consulting this month. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, having your payroll, um, budget, 
you know, I'm, I only have this amount to pay my employees. So maybe I need to hire someone or cut back hours on, on someone else. And so these are things and also proper bookkeeping too. That's another, that's, that's important. Another thing. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Everything you just mentioned was like amazing because it's information <laughs> that we all need and what's it what what's extremely important too is something that a lot of people say you could bring the horse to the water but you can't make a drink you mm-hmm. can offer people information all the time but if they don't want to listen they don't want to listen which is why finding the right clients for you is important as well um yeah. but bringing this information to you know the new generations to come and the the um mid age young age mid age and possibly older age individuals too that want to get into in- entrepreneurship or are operating as a business but are not they don't have a legal business structure or EIN or anything, but they're still operating as business. Like this is information that we all need and that they need, especially. Mm -hmm. Um, So I want to thank you so much for your time and dropping so many gems as you always (laughs) do. Thank Thank you. And also, um, for letting us know what organizations we can go to, to also, um, um, you know, sign up and get funding or grants for the businesses. Um, one of the other things that I wanted to ask was, um, you know, where can we find your courses or where can we find your services? And I'll be sure to make sure to include that link in the link below. So that, yes, yes, um, <laughs> yes. You guys yes. can go ahead and book Katiana for all her services and get your money mindset right. You know. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, so my uh my my uh link will definitely be on and you know on Amory's website and so on and so forth. But uh, you can look me up at bijoubijou dot com. That's actually my, my entire you know the entire business. And then on the bijoubijou dot com, there is a bijou bijou finance section. So you can click on there, and then you'll find the the mindful money um packages. And so that's, that's another way I'll post that direct link. So you don't have to go through all that. Cause I know people are lazy, right? I'm lazy. Mm-hmm. I don't need to go through. Hoops. <laughs> I just want to click and Oh, go there you go. There's it. all my yeah. courses. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to post that as well on, on my personal IG. You can find me at Katiana Carey, just like it says right down here. <laughs> right. <laughs> just like that. That's my name. That's my brand. That's who I am everywhere on Facebook, Instagram. I'm not on Twitter. I need to be though gotta hire somebody (laughs) (laughs) and uh and yeah so you can find me and then you can find uh, of course bijoubijou.com or on instagram as shop bijoubijou um but yeah that's where you can find me (laughs) <laughs> okay well again thank you again i do hope that we're able to come on um and discuss these topics more um so that we can share this information to other entrepreneurs who need it and therefore you know redirecting it back to you so that they can learn um you know from your courses and the services that you offer but yes thank you beautiful black woman for coming and sharing these <laughs> thank again. you beautiful black woman for having me <laughs> as always it's yes. always a pleasure working with you Anne-Marie you're so by the way guys this woman oh. right here <laughs> she is so talented and so, such you. a powerful woman right there oh. don't sleep on Anne-Marie now <laughs> thank you and don't sleep on Katiana yeah all right any video needs that you need of uh, any, any recorded um sessions that you need this is your girl right here oh, thank you I'm actually gonna send her some masks so she can help me with uh with a photo shoot hello <laughs> Yes, we gotta get in the studio. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Studio. So, so yeah, I look forward to definitely working with you uh, again and again and again. And uh, and thank you for having me for sure. Thank you for joining me again tonight. And that's it, y'all. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. Bye.